She looks up at you in surprise. Her great greenish gold eyes sparkle, and she rubs a palm over her smooth head, seemingly confused. You'd. You'd help me. Taken somewhat aback by her surprising beauty, you nod and ask what you can do. Tears star her eyelashes, and she begins to weep. She takes your hand. I know, I know. What a crybaby I am. Wow, okay. It's just. You're so kind. It's been a difficult day. The pouch. I really must find it back, or my master will flay me alive. It had quite a sum inside it. Ask her who she Magister serves. Master Raymond. He bade me take the coins to purchase supplies for his journey, but I dropped it along the way. He's sure to think I stole it. She tilts her head back and blinks back tears. I'd never do such a thing. Never. Offer to give her the missing amount. You're... God, you're so terribly kind. But I couldn't accept such lavish charity. I just... It's so unbecoming. Tell her not to think of it as charity, but as two people looking out for one another. I don't know what to say. Your kindness is overwhelming. She accepts the coins, letting her hand linger over yours for the briefest of moments. You don't know what this means to me. I'll send word to Magister Raymond right away. He should send for me soon enough. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, ask him to tell you the latest news. Many are latest, my friend. The war, the bishop, the queen. What tickles your fancy? Ask him about the war. I ain't looking too good for them lizards. Word is, the divine order's going to win the ancient empire and hit it all. Duh. She looks up at you in surprise. Her great greenish gold eyes sparkle, and she rubs a palm over her smooth head, seemingly confused. You'd... You'd help me. Taken somewhat aback by her surprising beauty, you nod and ask what you can do. Tears star her eyelashes, and she begins to weep. She takes your hand. I know, I know. What a crybaby I am. Wow, okay. It's just, you're so kind. It's been a difficult day. The pouch. I really must find it back, or my master will flay me alive. It had quite a sum inside it. Ask her who she Magister serves. Magister Raymond. He bade me take the coins to purchase supplies for his journey, but I dropped it along the way. He's sure to think I stole it. She tilts her head back and blinks back tears. I'd never do such a thing. Never. Offer to give her the missing amount. You're... God, you're so terribly kind. But I couldn't accept such lavish charity. I just... it's so unbecoming. Tell her not to think of it as charity, but as two people looking out for one another. I don't know what to say. Your kindness is overwhelming. She accepts the coins, letting her hand linger over yours for the briefest of moments. You don't know what this means to me. I'll send word to Magister Raymond right away. He should send for me soon enough. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, ask him to tell you the latest news. Many are latest, my friend. The war, the bishop, the queen. What tickles your fancy? Ask him about the war. I ain't looking too good for them lizards. Word is, the divine order's gonna win the ancient empire and hit it all. Don't need to tell you of all people them source-loving lizards don't stand a chance. Ain't no one left standing when you treat them to death, Bob. Tell him you want to hear more about the Queen. Jolly Justinia, Queen of the Dwarves. Ha! Scourge, more like. Here's twenty or so noble gentlemen. No one knows what they did wrong, if anything. And she has them stripped and whipped all the way to the execution grounds. Didn't even give them the dignity of a sword. No, ma'am. Had them all up. Real slow like. You ask me, and I say she's mad as a mink with his tail on fire. Queen or no queen. Say you're interested in the fate of the bishop. Seven, save us. 
Stabbed in the back he was by them vile, low-born, treacherous seekers. Kill them all, I say. Do them like Magister Raymond did, old Lady Siva. That'll teach them traitors. I mean, they doomed us all, didn't they? The son of the divine is dead. Gone. Who'll save us now? Okay. I think that lunatic Siva is loose again. We won't be so gentle when we catch her this time. Um, tell her that you found a wrecked caravan outside the town. Damn it. Magister Raymond wanted word in the caravan. But I had hoped the news would not be so grim. Report this to the Magister at the docks at once. You need any supplies? We'd stock up if I were you. It's madness out there. Never seen anything like it. Until later, then. What a sturdy elf you are. A glance at the dog's miserable face tells you it's sick, all right. Ask him what's wrong with the dog. What am I, dog's doctor? Dog sick? Go on, kiss a penny for a sick dog. As if you can pet the dog. Patty for a penny? You can sing him a love song and call him mummy. Okay, give him a coin. Kindly. A any chance of another one? Penny for a sick dog and all that? Much obliged. Could I cheer? Penny for a sick dog. Dog still sick, you know. The dog lies there quietly, clearly in great pain. What are you looking at? I'm sick here. Get lost. Ask what ails it. Got a pain in the neck. And got a bad pain in the neck. Lay your hand upon its neck. It flinches. A low, threatening growl builds within its throat. Slide your hand beneath its studded collar. Under the collar, you find the sharpened points of metal rivets, gouging the poor dog's skin. The dog bears its teeth at you and growls. Tell the dog that you can heal its pain, but it must trust you. The dog gives you a long, hard stare, but does not bite you. Yet. Turn the collar inside out. The dog goes to bite your hand, and then realizes the pain is gone. Hey, I feel okay. Thanks. I think I'll wander off now. Here, before I go, what can I do to show my gratitude? Ask him who put the collar on him. Master did. Ask the dog if he knows what that means. Huh? Uh, wait a minute. Master hurted me? Excuse me a minute. I'm gonna go now. But first, I have a thing I need to do. He turns to his master. You bad man, you! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Much business today. Penny for a grieving beggar whose dog ran away. Mention the dog's bite collar. Tell him he's cruel. God damn it! How was my livelihood? Penny for a grieving beggar? I reckon I'm owed it here. Tell him to get out of town. No. Penny for a grieving beggar who's... Then get out of the way, Penny for a sick dog! Could be worse, you know. Not to see how. As the Magister's eyes alight upon you, they widen until they are practically bulging out of their sockets. One trimless finger rises from voluminous robes and points right at you. From her other hand dangles handcuffs. If I'm Ben Mezdes, I live and breathe. I don't know how you got free, but it'll be back to the joy with you and no mistake. Smile, they remembered you. Who could forget? Best night's business the healer had in months. Now, come on. Back into a cage where you belong. Say that she'd be wise to ignore your presence completely. Your little tricks won't work on me, Ben Mezd. They'll be by soon enough. I do so much damage.
thanks for coming to me. My turn. Baloop. Good day to you. Last time oh, we wars at a kingdom, and we will love it. Devils to Bessie, another one. More queer folk than commoners in Driftwood these days. Ask why the bull thinks you queer. Just look at you. Never saw an ugly mark like that on a pretty face like yours. I bet you ain't the feather that put it there. Anyway, tavern's just down the road. Can't miss it. My pleasure, love. Hope you have a good time with the freak folk in there. I keep a wary eye, mind. I saw one of them dragging a void woken in there once. There's freaks, and then there's lunatics. Rubbish. Okay, what are you guys doing? Now on, you mute sacks of flesh! Put your backs into it! I'll not lose another day to the tide! Oh, rude. The Lord Dread awaits! It sails below with Dallas's breath! Oh. The Magister stops barking orders. 
He sniffs the air like a predator, turns to face you, the wolf eyeing the deer. Intense fellow, this one. Keep calm and courteously bid him good day. You do not get to make that decision. That decision is mine. A good day? Let's talk about a good day. Tell me, have you ever been strung up by the hands? Your body swinging like a bell's clapper as your bones are being broken with cast iron rods. So you've seen something similar on a gallows just outside of town. Oh, you've met with what's left of Seaver, have you? I'm so very glad you're familiar with my work. He licks his lips. Dry flesh turns wet. See, I'd like to string you up too. Rack you with rods and leave you dangling over a puddle of your own blood and piss. Intolerable. Ask what it is you've done to deserve such hostility. Oh, no, 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 no. That won't do at all. Innocence is a mask that doesn't fit. I'm very good at what I do, see. I don't even need a sauce hound yapping by my side. There was a whiff of something in the air when you approached. A current of filth. That is to say, sauce. Best convince me I was mistaken. Take a step closer and whisper he has a lot of nerve to accuse the best source hunter west of Arcs of being a sorcerer. He leans in closer and sniffs the air once more. Interesting. So I was mistaken. Must have been ambition I smelled on you, not the magic that dare not speak its name. Very well. In that case, we'll forego the gallows and turn straight to the hunt, the very definition of your order's existence. Seems peaceful here, doesn't it? A quiet day in a quiet town. One wouldn't think these drifting woods toss on dwarf-troubled waters. But they do. Um... You're intrigued. Inquire after these dwarven troubles. Consider for a moment the dwarf. What is he? A mule. A beast of burden. But some defy that role. There are rats among them, dancing to their rat queen's tune. I need of a rat catcher. Urge him to make his point. If you're to accept the role of a rat catcher, you'll need more concrete information. Of course. I must depart post haste, but Julian here will stay behind and be a good little parrot. Ask and he will answer. Stay behind? But... But I've my orders. Same as you. Dallas. Whew. Like I said, Julian is staying. And with that, I must be off. No hard feelings about the death threats, of course. How about we part shaking hands instead of stringing them up? Shake his hand and say you'll look into the trouble with the dwarves. How very hard. One last thing. The Magisters here are diligent men and women. A stranger like you may run into... troubles with them. Should this happen, just wave this piece of parchment in their eager little faces. My signature will placate them without fail, I assure you. Adieu and good luck. The Lord Dread awaits. The use of the gallows I pass on to you. Time has come, Ooh. my lip lovelies. We set sail. Like These sacks weigh like lead. It's a disgrace I have to toil like this. I'm a magister, not a damned silent monk. Okay, he leaves. The magister is rubbing the dirt off his robes. None the worse for wear, apparently, from the blast of magic that knocked him off his feet. You, the supposed source hunter. I'd be whining and dining aboard the Lord Dread if it weren't for you. Your meddling in Magister affairs had better be worth it. Tell him his superior told you to report to him. Yes, I am very much aware. It wasn't my damn head that hit the floor back there. Now answer me. Did you meet with the Magister caravan on your way into town? The hour's growing late and I'm beginning to worry something might have gone wrong. Yep. By the Bishop's bones, you saw it. Out with a woman. What happened? 
Tell him you came across a caravan east of town. It was destroyed by Void Woken. Uh, tell him the place was littered with dead magisters, sorcerers, and dwarves. Dwarves? Now pox on those beardy devils. Raymond, that old goat. Always suspected there's more to the driftwood dwarves than meets the eye. Hate to admit it, but I think he may be right. Too many things have gone wrong along Reaper's coast to attribute to bad luck. Magister ship sinking, weapons disappearing, and as you've seen, a caravan attacked and destroyed. Rumor has it the Dwarvian Queen herself is behind these acts of sabotage. That is what I want you to prove. Ask why Raymond and he suspect the dwarves to be corporates. They've always been snakes of the grass. Cheap labor, sure. And hard workers, too. Half of them are their queen's spies. Her eyes, her ears, her poison pouring hands. Queen Justinia will stop at nothing. She's a tyrant and a master strategist to boot. Say that if you're to prove these accusations, you have to know where to start looking. There's a local thug, Loha. He runs an operation out of his hideout beneath the Black Bull Tower. I suspect this man of being a spy for his queen. It may be interesting to have a word with him, find out what he's up to. But where I really want you to ferret around is Reaper's Bluffs, to the east of Driftwood. It's wild territory, remote and hostile, where I believe the dwarves may have set up a base of operations away from prying eyes. Should you find any such place, and better yet, proof that Lohar is working on behalf of Queen Justinia, you will be handsomely rewarded, I assure you. So you probably know enough for now. In that case, go forth and... Okay. The little boy looks at you. He picks his nose. You be careful. My daddy's a magister. No, he's not. His daddy's a fisherman like most daddies around here. Ask them what they expect to see staring at the water. We're waiting for our friend. He went for a swim. He'll be back soon. He went swimming all the way to Fort Happy. Fort Joy? That's what I said. Fort Joy. He's going to find his mum and bring her back. Ask if their friend's name was, is, Joe. Cool. How did you know that? Mrs, have you seen our friend Joe? Tell them the truth about Joe. They have to grow up sometime. The truth hurts, but they'll get over it. Kids are resilient. Tell them the truth. All right, kids, it's time you heard the truth. So here's the thing. Joe was eaten by a shark. The horror grows on their little faces. No, that's a horrible thing to say. I bet it wasn't Joe. I bet it was someone else's leg in that icky shark. She bursts into tears, then looks from you to her and back again, then starts crying too. Neil, hug both children to you, tell them it's going to be all right. After a moment, the crying subsides. Ben and Harriet snuggle into you. So where's Joe? Tell him Joe is with his ancestors in the Hall of Echoes. Omit the word, hopefully. It's okay to say you don't know. You don't have to make stuff up. I think we should go home. Come on, Ben. Thanks, lady. Bye bye. Bye bye, Mr. Lady Misses. <laughs> Mr. Lady Misses. They skip away. Still children, but now somehow older than before. As long as we don't think about it too much.
doesn't feel like playing, but... <clears throat> the Meister sits slumped in a chair, looking around the room as she works her shoulder with one hand. It looks like it was dislocated by the gallows. Damnable red cloak baboons ransacking my wardrobes. As if I would keep each valuable secrets in a pile with my unmentionables. She takes a deep breath, and with a twist, a click, and a screech of pain, she shoves her shoulder back into its socket. <laughs> I swear by the seven, if, <laughs> if we did not have more important matters to attend to. Reaching across the table, she pulls a bowl of hot water towards her and fishes some bandages, a needle, and thread out of a box. She slowly starts to tend to her wounds. At least the barbarians were unable to club their way into my vault, so everything you need should be safe. Watch as she slowly wraps a cut on her arm, asks why they strung her up. Apparently I had a claw in murdering their darling divine-waiting Alexander. The Meister wrenches the bandage, pulling the fabric tight against her wound. She winces before tying it off in a neat knot, but you can see the red stain already spreading across the fabric. Never mind that. Oof. That I was here the entire time. Apparently my cunning transcends time, space, and common sense. Cough uncomfortably. Actually, you're the reason the Magisters are looking for Alexander's killer. Meister Siva freezes, her eyes locked on you, her claws mid-swipe, cutting a new stretch of bandage. <sighs> Why on earth should I have thought anything else? Not that I was <laughs> sorry to hear about his death. I doubt my grin helped matters during the interrogation. And what do you need to do? It is not enough to be godwoken in order to ascend to divinity. There is a process. As she speaks, the Meister uncorks a vial of shimmering liquid, sauce. She lets a couple of drops fall on her hand, but instead of infusing with her body, they quickly evaporate on her scales. She stares at the empty spot on her palm for a long moment before turning back to you, continuing as if nothing had happened. A process by which God woken may ascend. It begins with discovering your deepest self, delving into your own soul. Say your deepest self is a place of tumbleweeds and silence, but if there's powers to be gained there, why not? Quite. Uh, cautiously ask what happens next. We shall begin once we have <laughs> the tools we need from my vault. You may have been chosen Godwoken, but becoming divine requires more than a supernatural pat on the head. Come, Godwoken. It is time to see just how awake you are. Fortunately, the Magisters pay as much attention to art as they do to fashion. Kindly remove that painting from the wall. I pray my instructions will not be too. The button? Rubbish. Now, kindly go to the vault and enter the combination. I shall call it out as you go. Okay, we'll come back to that quest. the divine upon you, my lady. My husband and I were just sitting down for a picnic under the sun. We haven't much to offer, but would you care to join us? Praise her hospitality and say you'd be delighted. Wonderful. Come, sit, sit. Oh, it's lovely to meet you people on the road. There you go, all cozy. So tell me, are you heading to arcs like we are? Nicholas and I wouldn't miss Lucian's day for the world. Smile and say you wouldn't miss Lucian's day for the world either. That's so, so lovely to hear. The more pilgrims pray for his return, the sooner Lucian will walk among us once more, just like the prophecy says. So come, let us break bread and strengthen ourselves for the journey. We have a sacred duty ahead of us in the holy city of Arx. You eat, drink, and have a good time of it with Glory and her husband, Nicholas. After the meal, you express your thanks and take your leave. You know... Let it be known henceforth 
to each and every subject here and everywhere that I care too much about the nice people in the game. In the absence of our whatever. Alexander, Bishop Divine, slain with malice and injustice by foul sorcerers, as were let fly by the perfidious lizards of the ancient empire, with the aid and abetancy of the treacherous dwarven kingdom, the divine order of Lucian is now led by his son's most trusted intimate and advisor, Dallas, hammer of the divine, savior of the sorcerers, and new deliverer of the peoples of Rivalon. The hammer shall take counsel from her most trusted advisors. Hail to the hammer, seven times blessed. Sure. And all those little majesties drone to our heart's content. We help them. Wait, what's in here? Oh crap, there's an upstairs? Uh, hello. Oh great, a citizen. Can't you see I'm on a break here? Tell her you found a destroy. Uh... Head nodding drowsily, the magister brings her voluminous sleeve up to her face. She sniffs loudly and suddenly jerks to attention, eyes red rimmed with zeal, and something else. They won't take me unawares. I'm I'm ready for anything. See? I have incepted. It, well, I'm ready. That's what matters. Vigilance. Mutter that she has to sleep sooner or later, and you can wait. She laughs an unpleasantly brittle crackle. Sleep is for the weak. Oh my god. Weak! You just wait indeed. You'll fall into it like all the others. Not me. Never me! Okay, crazy lady. Of course. Right away. Hello. Passions unblinking up. The Magister turns to you with a scowl. He already seemed immensely displeased, and your interjection isn't improving his mood. What? Ask what has him in such a foul mood. The Magister glances at you like you're something he just stepped in. Keep out of it! Try flattery and ask why a formidable Magister such as he has been relegated to such menial duties. That's what I want to know. Stuck here with those silent things. The new leadership ought to learn to respect its veterans. We're the ones who uphold the rule of law, not white ponches like Raymond and Jonathan. Express your sympathies and suggest that perhaps he'll get reassigned soon. A sly smile creeps across the Magister's face. Aye, and sooner than you might think, if the rumors are true. Let's just say there's other places where I'd be appreciated more than I am in Drift. Tell him that he should leave then and join up with whatever that this venture is. Who asked you? You're not even supposed to be down here. Remark that if he seems like a skilled individual, if his talents are being squandered here, then he ought to leave immediately. The Magister glances around the cells, before ripping the keys from his belt and casting them aside. This isn't the divine order I signed up for. Not anymore. I'm done. Good find. I've spotted something. Is that a tunnel? Effie's Emporium. Okay then.
Well, ain't you a tall drink at all, Ness? What can I do for you, honey? She fluffs them and coos. You're so very, very sweet to notice, honey. Ain't easy keeping him so nice in a dusty town like this. But I do take pride in him. Sure, why not? Not all of them hatch, you know. And between you and me, honey, I don't mind the taste of an omelet. Oh now my again. god, that's great. Go on and scoot then, honey. The cat stares up at you. Its midnight black pupils are too prominent for you to discern the color of its glazed eyes. Eight lives already gone. But I'd gladly lose the last if you could throw me a fish. One of those smelly kind. Tell him he doesn't look so well. Maybe he shouldn't be eating tainted fish. But I need them. So yummy. They taste like shadows and spoiled cream and turn the air dark oh, it feels so beautiful against my fur like being caressed by black cotton 